Hello. 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 Welcome Hello. back, you guys. It's another interview time with Passion Flicks actor number three. <laughs> interview number three. Um, you guys know I'm Haley. I'm Brittany. We are the Passionista Sisters. We are a fan account of Passion Flicks. You can follow us at passionflix underscore sisters on Instagram. Make sure you click the subscribe button to watch more interviews or past interviews of our Passionflix actors. Um, today we are going to be interviewing the awesome and devil devilishly handsome David Gregory. He plays uh, Clay Kincaid in Dirty Sexy Saints. He is Clay super Kincaid. awesome. Clay Kincaid. Uh, the one and only, uh, super awesome, super sweet guy, and we can't wait to talk to him today. We're really excited slash nervous, but it's going to be fine. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. But well, we just, we're a bundle of nerves, but it's okay. Just a little bit, but it happens when you're meeting someone of fame quality <laughs> so <laughs> obviously it's not brad pitt but it's like our brad pitt <laughs> it's our brad pitt <laughs> our brad pitt it's a passionista's brad pitt it's a passionista's brad pitt i like that yeah i like that we're, we're gonna officially name him that I like, I like you're no, we nicknamed you <laughs> your name is no longer david it, it's, it's brad, <laughs> brad. Just, it's brad just go with it it's Brad. You're welcome. Ugh. But yeah, no, we're super excited to be interviewing him today um, and talking about Judy Sexy Saint and kind of new projects that he is potentially working on now that he's, I believe he's back at work now because of like COVID kind of lifting in some areas. So he's able to do more things now. Um, and he recently just got married a couple months ago, right? Yeah, to the fabulous Jen. Yeah, and so we'll talk a little bit about that, too. So I'm really excited to, because they kind of had a COVID wedding. <laughs> they did. Got married during a pandemic. Yeah, so we get to maybe see, like, how all of that went and how he felt about that and stuff. So um, hopefully he'll be able to tell us if he's going to Passion Con or not, or hopefully that's in the back of his mind. <laughs> so. Stay tuned. <laughs> I know, so we'll see. But I'm really excited to see what he has to say about all of the things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, oh. I guess too, we can kind of mention also, um, Brittany and I have created our Etsy shop. For our you Passionista Sister merch. Some of the merch back there. Oh, you have a shelf! It's an unorganized mess, but... What? It's there. It's there. That's so awesome. All I have is a clear tub with my paint and my paintbrushes and then the canvases. <laughs> it's just a clear tub that's under the desk because I have nowhere else to put it. Um, but we're starting our Etsy shop. You can buy fan-made merch from us soon. We're going to be launching that this week, so we're super excited about that. Um, and we're going to be sending uh, kind of like care packages to Allie, Tosca, and Lauren, making their own stickers with their faces on them, um, bookmarks, cups, canvases with their, like, nicknames that we've given them, um, and stuff like that. So we're really excited. You better believe they have nicknames. Yes, they have nicknames. We have Ale. Ale. <laughs> and then we have Tosca. She's the queen of passion. We've given her that crown. And then Lauren, she doesn't really have a nickname, but we just have like little sayings that like, what would Lauren do? <laughs> and she does little things that we've like decided, okay, this is what Lauren does. Yeah, it, it's kind of like when we do an interview and we'll be like, we have a guest waiting in the waiting room. Pull a Lauren. Pull a Lauren. Pull a Lauren. Let him in. <laughs> the <laughs> recording kind of has started. Yeah. Lauren. I think I started. Allie did like 
that we said those things because just like she yeah. does do that. <laughs> we were like, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, we're really excited. We hope that we can start mailing out those little like merch care package things to them within the next week or two. And then hopefully within the next week or two, also we can start gathering um, some orders in from our followers and whatnot. So be super cool. We're excited. Yeah, everyone's really excited about the Gabriel's Inferno sticker. Everyone really likes that one. <laughs> and I am my own worst critic. So I personally thought like I could have done a better job on it, but everybody's just like, oh, no, God. I love it. Keep it. Don't so touch good. it. Don't edit it. <laughs> just keep it the same. My favorite, well, I'm biased because I love Dirty Sexy Paint, clearly. So that one's my favorite. But the one with Professor Payne. Yes. Turned out really. I like that one. I like that one too. Professor Payne on it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I really like, I do like uh, Jordan and David. I do like the Dirty Sexy Saint one because you can really see like Jordan's smile in it, even though you don't, it, we don't show their eyes or anything, but you can see like that's her smile. Like it's, that's her. Yeah. So you can tell it's her. So I know I've had a couple, like my husband who's, he's, new to the whole thing um he's like why don't they have eyes that's creepy and i'm like if i had to draw eyes um i wouldn't be doing that no i don't draw eyes well and that's like a new not really a trend but it's a new form yeah. of art it's like yeah. you know just doing it without the eyes so yeah. it's like you do it like if they wear glasses you put glasses on but it's like, like an outline yeah of people yeah so it's like a new thing. I, I've never seen it until like a couple months ago when people, when we got our logo with our faces on it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I've never seen that. And I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. But okay. I like that we're starting to incorporate it too. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull Lauren because someone's in the waiting room. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, All right. Snap. You ready? Nobody freak out. Okay. Yeah. Nobody freak out. Nobody freak out. Oh my lord. Hi. Hi. Hello. Nope. No. <laughs> Thank you, muted. Having technical issues. How's that? Can you hear me now? There we go. Hey, we can Perfect. hear you now. <laughs> it was telling me something that I've never seen before, so... <laughs> You're like, yeah. um, okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. How Hi, are you? Holly. Good. I'm Haley. Hi, Haley. <laughs> Obviously, you know that's Brittany. <laughs> I'm Brittany. Hi, Brittany. I've, I've seen your guys' posts a lot. Uh, and Haley, I think you do, like, a lot of TikToking in reference to... Yes, I've seen those a lot. Yes. We both do. We both do. <laughs> I recognize both from that, and um, and as someone that has been directly involved with the company, I'm glad that you guys are. It, it seems like with Gabriel's Inferno, like things have sort of surged a little bit. So um, yes. I directly attribute that to your online presence and people hearing things about, you know, not just that movie, but then people get on there and they see other movies, and it's yeah. it, everybody wins. So it's great. Well, Thank yeah. you for doing yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We blew up because of Gabriel's Inferno stuff, but then now we've been trying to introduce like other movies that Passionflix has created. And awesome. so we did a we did do a live about Dirty Sexy Saint, and everyone was like really excited to talk oh, about. Oh, great! It. Thank you so much. Well, I have to say, like, uh, you know, I didn't have a, a ton of followers. This isn't really that important, but I didn't have a ton of followers when I was shooting the movie. Um, people started to follow me because of that. And then um, the movie came out, we had a surge and people seemed to enjoy the movie. But then um, I was like minding my own business, quarantining in Ohio. And then suddenly uh, <laughs> I got this surge of followers and I was like, what happened? What is the difference? And the difference was that Gabriel's Inferno came out. So oh, yeah. And, and then they were like, oh wait, there's other movies. So then there's other actors. And so they're like, wait. <laughs> that's really great. Thank you for- Yeah. That. No problem. Because yeah. so we, we love you guys. We love what you guys do. So we want to appreciate and like 
let everyone know all this work that you put into it and stuff like that. So thank you. That means a lot. I made the mistake yeah. of pushing a button. It's okay. I are saw you, that. I was like, are you good? <laughs> <laughs> I made the mistake of turning up the volume. Ah. Uh, don't do that, because then your computer is going to be like, wait, nope, don't do that. You. Mm -mm. Nope, don't be pushing the button. But we did want to tell you before we start asking you questions. Yeah. We did want to tell you congratulations on getting married. Thanks, I appreciate oh, awesome. that. Oh, Thank you. Rings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's, guys' rings are not as cool, but um, they yeah. can be. Some of them are actually pretty decent looking and really pretty. So they they can be. And actually, my fiance, my wife, got me this one after we got engaged because um, I was already wearing a ring at the time, and you know, just kind of like in solidarity. If she's gonna wear a ring, I gotta wear a ring. But she got me one that is engraved on the inside with our the date we got engaged, and so. We sort of got married in a hurry because uh, her mom was not doing well. And we wanted to make sure that, that she would be at the ceremony with us. And so in that was a discussion of, should we get a new ring? And I was like, no, I really like this ring. So there's a sentimentality to this ring. And hopefully, I mean, I don't plan on it, on changing it out. Like this ring means a lot to me specifically. So yeah, I think it's cool, but I appreciate you saying but that. I like it, so... <laughs> No, I like it. No, it looks, it's awesome. And we know, we thought that you guys, like, obviously got married during all the COVID mess. So how was that? Did you have any restrictions on, like, guests? Yeah, we did it or? in May. So there was still a lot more uncertainty about what was going to happen in the future. So um, we knew the number one goal. Also, by the way, if if ever I cut out, if my internet gets wonky, just raise your hand if you, like, yeah, if you're, like, because I think you might miss something like, and if you're recording it, I just don't want, I can repeat it if you want is kind of okay. what I'm saying. Um, so long story short is because her mom was not doing well, we knew that we wanted to have her at the ceremony. So we kind of planned it in two weeks, <laughs> which maybe oh, I don't so recommend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we like sliced the guests basically to just being uh, family members. Everybody wore a mask. Um, my family lives in Alaska, so they couldn't come, but we did a big Zoom thing. So we hired, um, my father-in-law works in the news and he had some friends that do, like have their own setup. So he basically had us, I thought, okay, when I was thinking a Zoom wedding, I was like, oh, they're just gonna have a laptop right. and put it in front of us. They had like two cameras and they had like, like a whole sound system. And it was, yeah, it was a great setup. And somehow the New York Times heard that we did it that way. And so they wanted to know what what we did not because we're so great but because uh zoom weddings are now like in vogue yeah, and so, no. <laughs> yeah so I, we did not start this trend and honestly we are not responsible for how well it was shot it, like, like we got the video back and i was like look at all these angles this looks great <laughs> like, wow um, so uh that happened i'm glad it did um my mother-in-law passed away about 40 days after that so we got some time with her but we all knew kind of where that was heading it was not COVID related. Um, she had a heart condition. Um, so it's been a weird summer, having said that. Um, I, I will say like some of the silver lining that's happening lately has been that some of the production companies like Passion Flicks are going back to work now. And so with the immediate testing, we're able to know if, if people are safe to work on a set. So it, it kind of like, I'm not the only actor, I'm sure, but uh, there are a lot of people that want to go back to work, if anything, just to get away from sort of the sadness and the weirdness that this has all caused. And um, yeah. I think we've never been more grateful for our jobs than this time. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah we, we interviewed, um, I think you met him, maybe, I'm not sure, Richard Brevard. He played Ethan in Gabriel's Inferno. Yes, I, yes, and yes, yes. Him. And he was like, if I don't get on a set within the next two uh, weeks, I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. I think in general, you'll meet actors a lot that are super grateful to get jobs because you never know. Every actor thinks that their last job was their last job. Yeah. And so this has shed a whole new light onto that. And I've been talking to my poor therapist about this a lot. I'm like, I just miss working. And she's like, okay. I just want to see people. I want to read lines. I want to change yeah. clothes. Sir, pajamas. I, I mean, I get it. I, here's the other thing is like, I'm, I'm sure never before has there been so much content consumed than during quarantine. So uh, it, it, you know, 
I understand some people have talked to me in this about how certain industries are more expendable than others. And, and while I understand like the, the physical process of that, especially given that I'm not an essential worker when it comes to like somebody in healthcare or somebody um, at CVS, even like we need those people to do those jobs. So it definitely puts a lot of things in perspective. And so coming back has been a very, it's made me a lot more grateful. Not that I wasn't before, but just right. put a lot. Of perspective. Yeah. Sure. That's so awesome. But yeah, we appreciate you guys and everything that you guys do. So that's why Brittany and I have been trying to like slowly work our way through the Passion Flicks crew and trying to interview you guys and just trying to not only just to like obviously we want to get to know you guys more um, because you guys are more just soulful, down to earth, very humble and thankful for your job. So we wanted to like talk to you about that, but also. Um, a lot of fans don't get this opportunity, so she and I are so grateful to be able to do this. Oh, that's guys. great, guys. That's really so, cool. Yeah, so we wanted to share, like, from a fan's point of view, like, how we perceive things and our appreciation for you guys and stuff like that. So. Well, it, the feeling is mutual, and um, I, 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 I can almost guarantee that you won't talk to someone that is worked for Passion Flicks that doesn't feel that way right back at you guys. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah. 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 And, and for forewarning, you are known as Passion Flicks's Brad Pitt. Oh, really? Come yeah. on. We, we called you our Passionista Brad Pitt. Our Passionista Brad Pitt, and everybody's wow. like, yes. yes. I'll take it. I think <laughs> the title is maybe not as earned as, I mean, I, I've seen the lineup of men that they have, so I, I already know I'm in good company, but, you know, we all have our own perceptions of ourselves, so. Yeah. I didn't put myself very high on that list, so I appreciate it. I, I'm very I'm, I'll take it. You're up there, and uh, other, I know you're married, but other women agree that you're up there. So thank you. Fine. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> My wife is going to see this and, like, roll her eyes. She's like, nah, he's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I guess so we can go ahead and just kind of get started into our questions. Um, sure. So, <laughs> it's going to be really funny. So my first question kind of leads into this little short story that I'm going to tell you that's really funny. So Brittany called me yesterday, she was, or she texted me. I was at breakfast with a friend. She was like, hey, like, I need you to call me as soon as you can. And I was like, okay. I was like, either this is really bad or this is, like, really good. And she was like, hey, so I'm re-watching the Passion Pod with David and Jordan to just, like, because we do that before we do interviews, so we don't sure, ask you the same sure. questions. And so she was sure. like, they talk about you. And I was like... <laughs> What? And she goes, they say your name. And I was like, <laughs> what? And so I had to go on there. And then I was like at the minute where she was telling me where it was when I was watching. It. And then Allie was like, yeah, like, because you were talking about Charlie DeMillo or however you say her name. Yep. And, um, and then she was like, yeah, like, we have a fan right now that's making these TikToks or whatever. Her name's Haley. And I was like, she yes. said my name. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, because they're, they pop up so frequently and they're so – specific to what the project you're doing it for and they're like yeah so yeah, yeah we all had seen them at that point oh, so that was like months ago yeah but and the funny thing is is that i looked at the date that was a week before i i went viral on passion flicks wow so i was like wait they were already talking about me before uh, i even like did anything I was like, wait. The ramp up right to it for I know. And then I tagged with Brittany, and then she went viral too, and then now we're doing them together. So it was just like, oh. <laughs> well done. Well done, guys. Well done. I know. We're getting there. But um, so that leads me to my question, though. Have you thought about doing a TikTok or making an account or doing something similar? <laughs> you know, it's funny because the other day, my wife, who's gotten on TikTok, had turned to me and she was like, You should get on this now. And I was like, no, I just don't. <laughs> so, <I'm okay. laughs> or proof. Yeah, here's the thing. I guess part of it. So the, the short answer is I thought about it, but part of it is like during all this quarantine business, there's a, there's a big part of me that hasn't felt super creative. And so sometimes I'm like, I'm like, Oh, I have an idea. And then I go, is anybody really going to care? And I know that's a bad thing to say. I know it is because there's always a niche for, for everything really. Um, but you are the second person to ask me in the span of a week. So oh, I guess, no, no, I'm saying like, I guess now that I am considering it even more because I, I didn't, it sounds weird. I just didn't think that I had much to offer, but maybe I do. So yeah. stay tuned. I am on my wife's 
TikTok a lot. Like she has these really great um, videos that she comes up with ideas for, and I'm, I'm either helping her shoot them or I'm I'm interjecting myself in the background. So yeah, I don't even know. What I'm <laughs> Yeah, they, they took us forever to get to like understand and learn. But once sure. she and I did it, we were like, we would text each other all the time, like, oh, this would be good for this scene in this movie. This mm. would be good during this one. <laughs> so we would just That's like, great. <laughs> we haven't done any dirty sexy saint ones because it's kind of hard to try to find perfect sounds that would be in relation to like the character's relationship and like what y'all say to each like, other. Yeah. So it's like but yeah, to the other ones, they, they've been pretty funny and they've been making Tosca and Allie laugh. So I'm like, that works. <laughs> you guys are in, you guys are in, that's great. So, but, well, if you do make one, make sure to make an announcement so everybody can watch you on there. I absolutely will. I, I, I know not many people are on Twitter as much, but I was using it for a while and like, sometimes that's where I go. Like if, if, a, if a topic is trending, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go research these four topics because now they're trending and I want to make sure that there's truth to them or whatever, especially in this day we're living in now. So, so I've been using tick, um, excuse me, I've been using Twitter and I've been using Instagram thinking, okay, this is, this is it. No. <laughs> this is all that I need. Oh, no. <laughs> nope. Somebody asked me the other day if I had a Snapchat and I was like, oh, wow, we're really going back now. I haven't thought about Snapchat in forever. And the answer is unfortunately no. Like, no. <laughs> nope. Yep, yep, yep. Hi. All right. So this is okay. When I was in high school, I was okay. So I was diagnosed with cancer when I was in high school, and oh, wow. thankfully the hospital was like a mile or so away. So I would walk to the hospital and get my radiation treatment, and then as I was getting radiation, a certain soap opera would pop on. Oh, wow. And it was one life to live. So wow. my question is, do you miss your one life to live days, Mr. Robert Ford? Wow. Well, first of all, uh, you're standing before me today. So presumably you've beaten cancer. So congratulations. Three times. Three times. That's awesome. Good for you. Um, second, I do miss it. Uh, I, I will say I was very aware when I was on the show that I was lucky because when I got hired, the first thing I did was Google the show and Google kind of what was going on and what people thought about it. And I, I read a lot of articles on possible cancellation. And mm -hmm. so I kind of panicked and thought, am I going to have a job? But then that turned into two and a half years of my life. So, so rather than panicking, I guess it's, it's more important to live in the moment. So every day I walked in the door is what I'm saying is like, was a day where I was like, I'm lucky to have this job. I really love my job and I love the people that I'm with. Um, those are people I still keep in contact with um, on a fairly regular basis. Anybody that I had scenes with on the show, I was still d directly in my life. And weirdly enough, I did an interview last week um, in a publication and the author of the article sent it to Erica Slezak, who of course played Vicky on the show, who I haven't talked to in a long time. And she emailed me and, and wrote me a very kind thank you essentially because i'd mentioned her in the article and how uh, how much i looked up to her and how cool she not how cool she was because that's that's that that trivializes it a little bit she just was um she just was she taught me how to lead a sh show and not that i've done that but but i learned kind of that when you're number one on the call sheet people look up to you and and how are you going to handle that both with the cast and the crew um and she was the first person i kind of learned that from so uh, I feel like having been away from that show now for about 10 years, um, I can totally see the impact it's had on my life. When I talked to Carly and Erica, who wrote Dirty Sexy Saint, they said one of the reasons why they hired me for this was because of that show and because I think it was Carly watched One Life. Mm -hmm. So that's just like a, a ripple effect of a blessing that I'm, I'm still reaping benefits of a decade later. Uh, some of the best actors I've worked with still, some of the greatest crew, um, and it's a job I miss a lot. So, and I'm thrilled, uh, for whatever it's worth, that it, it helped you get through some radiation treatments, which I know. Yeah. Well, I was watching Dirty Sexy Saint, and then you popped up as, like, turned around and on the, you were the bartender, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Ford, where's Tessa? Where's, <laughs> Where is she? 
I'm in Thank Carolina. You. <laughs> I appreciate that, and and got to play a little a little better of a human being than um, I think towards the end Robert Ford was a better guy, but but uh, was kind oh, of a player. Oh. I started out, yeah, yeah, just, just a little oh, bit. Okay. I appreciate that very much. Um. Okay. Do you prefer writing or acting? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't know if I could choose yet. There might be a day where I'm maybe forced to choose or, or as we go through our lives, if you start getting more opportunities in one area, like um, it, it's hard not to look at the universe and say, oh, well, this is probably happening for a reason. So, um, but I'll be honest with you. I started writing because I, I was only playing the same kind of role and I was, I felt like I wasn't being taken seriously enough. Um, not that it's not good to make a living as an actor, but but over time I was realizing that the only parts I was getting cast as were based mostly on my looks, which worried me a little because I thought, well, what if one day they don't last and then I, I don't have a way to work in this industry that I love. And so I started writing almost based on fear and then it became something that I really enjoyed to do, uh, enjoyed doing. And so um, I don't know if I could pick one yet, but they both uh, satisfy in a different way and I enjoy doing them very much. And it's, it's nice. I've been in rooms in the last couple of years where I'm just in the room as a writer. And so when people look at me and they go, well, what's your idea? Or what, what is it that you're gonna, it's, it's kind of nice. Cause um, I, unfortunately, and I'm, I'm not certainly not the first person that this, that this has happened to, but there've been times where people go, oh, well, he probably doesn't know cause he's just a pretty face or he's just this. And I'm like, actually, that's not true. So maybe if you took the time to, you know what I mean? So yeah. writing has, has opened that up a little bit. And I know that's not the worst problem to have in the, in the world, but um, uh, it's also a problem that I know women have been experiencing in the film and television and theater and modeling any industry that has that on the forefront for a lot longer than it has for men. So um, uh, it definitely put a lot of things in perspective for me and, and made me understand a whole side that I didn't really think I knew before. So for what it's worth, I don't know if I could choose yet, but I do enjoy both of them immensely. And I'm glad that you brought up um, like appearances because Brittany and I had discussed this, I think in a live one, because mm -hmm. we were talking about Julio who plays um, Gabriel. And so, I mean, we discussed it, I think a little bit with Richard too. So we tried to tell our followers, while well, yeah, it's great to obviously admire or like admire features mm -hmm. of the actors and stuff like that. Because obviously, like we're going to be attracted to the outer parts first. Like that's what right. people see right. firsthand. But mine and Brittany's mission is not only to yeah, like appreciate what you look like on the outside, but to really dig deep as humans and mm -hmm. really understand like your core value and who you are on the inside, mm -hmm. not just, you know, on the outside. But that's why we are attracted to like you or Richard or Julia mm -hmm. or whoever, not because of your outward appearance, but because you are down to earth, you're humble, you're soulful, you really appreciate what you do, you have a passion for what you do. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we like out of the actors and the reason why Tosca picks you guys. It's not because, oh, you're a pretty face. It's because you can bring good quality work to the table. And that's what I we appreciate want to that. <laughs> so. Thank you. No, that means a lot. It, it's, yeah. I think we all, I, I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you this. I think we all want people to see that, but um, that's not necessarily, you know, because because obviously you have to look a certain way to get the job, but and maybe I'm not the first person to say this too, but but there is this weird thing of like, well, will people like me if I, if I don't? You know, somebody sent me a message recently, and they said, well, I hope you're still in shape during quarantine. And I was like, well, the gyms are closed, so while I'm working out, also like, I don't know, it was weird. It was like, why haven't we seen any pictures of you? During? And I was like, also because there's nothing really to post. But like, it it, it got me thinking like oh God, what if, you know, it's the same kind of thing I was telling you before. And so it means a lot to hear from your guys' perspective that, that uh, and that does come across, especially because Tosca has curated a group of people that, that seem to have their waters run deep. And um, 
I can tell talking to people that watch these movies that they resonate with that. And that's most important, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we've had followers like, you know, just comment on obviously all of their outward appearance, which, you know, girls do that when we get together and we talk about attractive sure. men or whatever that happens. But at the end of the day, we try to remind them and be like, yeah, but we also like them because they're nice, they're generous, right. they're like, right. <laughs> you know, trying to get all these inside qualities too. Sure. Cause I keep saying it to multiple people too. It's for women also. You can be like this most attractive person on the outside, but if you have this ugly, ill-intentioned heart, it comes out. So you're technically ugly to me or to mm -hmm. whoever because of the inside. So, yeah. Makes a big but, difference. But Tosca's done a really like fabulous job with everyone she's casted. Everyone is like, everyone's pretty, but you're also like mm -hmm. have a really good, nice, like, undertone too <laughs> so. I, I don't know how she does it because because i asked her once and she said you know she looks at everybody's reels and she you know, looks at their body of work and i'm like but you don't sit down and interview them i mean she did that's not fair she did call me on the phone to sort of pitch me the project yeah uh but i didn't i was like you know when i met jordan and i met other people like i met um celestine and and um oh my god jc the, the guy from, oh my God. Oh, I just lost his name too, but Jeremy, you know. Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. 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 His, I'm, I'm see his Instagram handle in my head and I think it's JC Baptiste or JP, J yeah. something like that. So um, when we were in London with them, the same thing, I was like, wow, you guys are so cool and you're so chill. And while I kind of expected that, I also wasn't sure. And so like, I don't know, I, I just, I found that really refreshing and I, I even I've gone onto his Instagram and hers since then and like they're very consistent people um, and like I don't know I just find that really refreshing because I feel like this industry can get fickle uh, and people are often warned like oh well be careful and I'm like actually the majority of the people I've met have been super chill so yeah. everyone calm I'm down. Good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Well that's also why we make a stand like for piracy too is also mm -hmm. like we don't want people taking sex scenes or whatever and posting them online, not just for women, but it's also the men. Like we fight for the men too. Like I appreciate that. We don't, you know, somebody had posted screenshots of Julio, his butt was all over the internet. And we're like, no, no, no. Like, Wait a minute. Yeah. No, nope, that's not allowed. <laughs> I appreciate that. With women. I appreciate that. I actually, I've, I've had conversations with my agent about it. I've had conversations with Jordan about it, certainly Tosca, but like, um, because the mission statement of the of Passion Flicks in the first place is not to put that forward unless it's part of the story, um, I think it is important. And like, we even had that conversation on the movie, Jordan was a little more revealed in one scene. And so the next time we shot one of those scenes, I was, and that was, not at my request, but I was like, fair is fair, first of all. And second of all, like Tosca shows us the, the sort of storyboard of what she wants to show. And she's like, and if you're okay with this? And I was like, well, yeah, since you asked, A, consent, but also B, yeah. since I'm seeing the vision that you have and since, you know, to make those movies work, I think not every scene of that nature should be shot the same way. So it should have variety. And I think it is a... a it is an equal playing field here, so fair is fair. Uh, and that's that's a whole other conversation, but it's kind of de derived from that conversation. So I appreciate that. Yeah. We, we take care of y'all. We look after you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We got your back. <laughs> we got your uh, back. Let's see. Um, so who is an actor that you admire most? Oh, man. That's, that's uh, <laughs> I'm kind of an old soul. I... I uh, I, I sit and I mean, like when I left to my own devices, I'll be watching like classic old Hollywood, like 1940s, 50s, 60s films. Um, the the as a writer, the the play that I just optioned last year uh, is about Henry Fonda and Jimmy Stewart, mostly because they were they were best friends in Hollywood in the 40s, 50s and 60s and 70s. But they also um, uh, were political opposites. And so I thought a play of that time in this time would be really important yeah. Um, yeah. that people can be friends and also disagree and maybe cross the aisle a little bit so when i look at similar to what you guys are saying when i look at um actors or 
or actresses uh, that I admire, I'm constantly thinking about sort of who they are as, as a whole, not just the person that they put up on screen. And I say that because there's certainly great directors and writers and, and actors that maybe aren't worthy of our admiration in 2020. Does that make sense? Like, um, I mean, I can't speak super candidly about it simply because I don't know all the situations, but like, you know, we have our Bill Cosby's, our Roman Polanski's, like there are people that, that have made good art that now we question who they are as a person. So for me, like having their off screen persona, whatever that is, whether or not they're an actor or not is super important to me. Um, my favorite actresses are all really smart people and, and like super open. Like it's not just cause I don't know, like anybody can be glamorous on screen, but not everybody can be a good person. So I hope, I wish. <laughs> uh, I know we can only hope and dream that everyone is like really nice on the inside. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, they always say never meet your heroes. And I'm like, well, how about we meet our heroes and then they're good people. Like, well, is that so much to right. ask? Like, right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and Jordan and everybody else are our heroes, and we're getting blessed I was to meet you guys. I just met my hero, and he did. It's like we just met one right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening right now. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. I think you kind of touched on this a little bit, but what are you most looking forward to when this pandemic is like on the downhill and trying to be sure, over? Sure. What are you most looking forward to? I mean, I, I, I'm sure I'm not the first person to say I'm looking forward to going back to work. Um, but in that same vein, not just as an actor, there are some projects that I have as a writer that have been put on hold. And I think um, um, there's, there's a big part of me right now that's like, I feel like I'm on the cusp of, of m maybe being um, seen as a writer just as much as I'm seen as an actor. And so I, I felt like I was getting that momentum when this happened. And so it, it kind of, it kind of, uh, not, wait, boy, I'm so dramatic. I, I was gonna say it kind of destroyed me, but it kind of like, cause when I'm an actor, like, oh, I'll go in and audition for a job. And if I don't get the job, I'll try auditioning for another job. But when you write something, it is yours. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't happen, that's a piece of you that goes away. Right. And um, not everything I'm, I write, I'm that precious about, but there are certain projects where I'm like, this is my yeah. soul. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> like my corner right. so, so when the thought of that during this quarantine, when I was like, oh God, what if we, what if this never happens because of X, Y, and Z actually occurred? I, I don't think we're in that phase now, but there was a moment where I was like, what if? Um, I felt a lot differently about it than I did about, well, what if I have to wait a year to shoot another TV show or something, which obviously sucks, but the the difference is so... Because right. one is, one is being hired out, and one is like everything I have. So, I don't know if every writer feels like that. I mean, certainly there are writers on shows that um, are used to, you know, here's an episode, you have to write it, and so it's like, okay, well, I'm working within the confines that I've been given, so I can understand that not feeling as personal at times. Depends on the project. Certainly for me, it definitely does. But that's the big. That was the biggest thing. So I'm looking forward to putting both hands back in the. Water, water, mm -hmm. I irons in the fire, both irons in the fire. 